Welcome back to another episode of Introductory Organic Chemistry. Since you guys liked the last episode where I talked about the worst smelling compounds in my PhD, I decided that it would be a good idea to talk about the best smelling ones. So let's get right into things. If you recall from the last time, I mentioned that I do research involving sulfur and fluorine. If you haven't checked out the last video where I talk about the worst smelling molecules, I'll put a link to it right here. Most of my work has to do with thiocarbonyl compounds, which is just a sulfur double bond carbon. And in this video, I'm strictly discussing wonderful smelling compounds that I actually prepared. Hopefully you enjoy these pictures. So the first compound is this ester. On the left, you can see some crystals growing out of solution as well as some liquid in there as well. Some of these crystals are from the 1, 2, 3 trimethyl version, and some of them are from the tetramethyl. However, this is a pure sample of the tetramethyl, and you can see these crystals are absolutely gorgeous. These are called pinpoint crystals. And this compound, when it's in its oil form, is super refractive. Uh, it's super, super beautiful, and it smells really nice. A really pleasant compound to have in the lab. Now this is a really cool compound because when I did thin layer chromatography, when I spotted this compound, it fluoresced so brightly that I could see it without even using a UV light. It was so intense. Now the way I made this compound was I started with the benzoic acid and I refluxed with, with uh, sulfuric acid and methanol to do a Fischer esterification. And I subsequently did a permethylation of these two anilines to get the tetramethyl derivative. Now it actually was quite stubborn and I had to use a lot of excess uh, iodomethane, um, but eventually I got most of it to go. And I still had to do column chromatography because some of the trimethyl was just super stubborn. Now you might be thinking I should have used a reductive amination approach, but in this case it worked best when I just did iodomethane and the quaternary ammonium salts were unstable. And if you don't know what that means, I've got a great video about it that I'll pin right here. Now the next compound, this is a difluorobenzodioxyl. This compound smelled quite sweet. Um, you can see it's a solid, but it still has enough of a vapor pressure that it's easy to smell. It doesn't smell like that new shoe smell that you get with acetophenone. It has more of just a sweeter smell. And so these compounds in general smell quite nice. A couple of them smelled like plastic in an unpleasant way, but for the most part, these ones smelled really good. And so the way that we made this was we just took this catechol and treated it with thiophosgene, which is the guilty nice smelling compound that we probably shouldn't be smelling because it's really toxic. And then we get rid of the sulfur and we put two fluorines in its place using the chemistry that my PhD is focused on. Um, now let's talk about the next compound, this cyclobutane containing difluoroether. This is a nice clear oil. It had a slight plastic smell, but it was still fruity and pleasant overall. Now, while this compound smelled sweet, this in glass left for long enough will slowly hydrolyze to the ester, the carbonyl derivative. And that one has more of a stereotypical ester smell. This has more of like a synthetic sweet smell. And so the way that we made this compound was we first took this methyl ester, treated it with Lawson's reagent to convert the carbonyl to a thiocarbonyl. We then transesterified with cyclobutane methanol and finally underwent desulfurative fluorination to afford this nice difluoroether. This is a nice compound. Uh, it's just unfortunate that it wasn't more stable because then you could have had it around longer and smelled it even more. Now the next compound is this very odd looking trifluoromethyl selenide or a trifluoromethyl selane if you prefer. This compound is surprisingly sweet. It smelled very minty and fresh and I've made benzylic OCF3s and SCF3s as well but for whatever reason the selenium one had a very distinct mintiness to it. Now, you probably won't want to go smelling a whole bunch of this because it has selenium in it, and even if it isn't toxic, it might give you really bad BO because selenium compounds tend to make you smell awful. And so the way that I made this compound was, first I took cyanide and I refluxed it with black selenium and ethanol. Now, if you reflux selenium and ethanol, uh, you can convert black and gray allotropes to red allotropes. Uh, it's just a slow reaction, but the red allotrope has higher surface area and reacts fast with cyanide, but this can all happen in one pot and it's fine. Then we get this potassium selenocyanide. The selenocyanide can engage in an SN2 reaction with benzyl bromide, affording this benzylic uh, selenocyanate, which can then undergo a decyano, decyanation using TMSCF3, Rupert Prakash reagent, to afford the SECF3 product. This is a really cool reaction. Um, if you haven't seen this type of chemistry before, it's quite neat. So even though this is one of the nicest smelling compounds I've made, you probably won't find it in perfumes anytime soon due to the toxicity of this compound. Now let's get to the final compound. This is the absolute best smelling thing I have ever smelled. I wish everyone could smell this because it was like, it was just like pure candy. Like I want to smell this compound all the time. It was such a good smelling compound. 
And so the way that we made this was we put this uh, specific uh, benzene dithiol protecting group on an alcohol. But in this case, we didn't use it as a protecting group. We underwent desulfurative fluorination with silver one fluoride to get this difluoromethyl ether product. And I just really can't stress how good this compound smelled. It smelled like the sweetest candy ever. Like, like you, you know that like artificial candy smell that's like really good and attractive? This had that, but like on steroids. And I wish I could show this to everyone because it's such a good smelling compound. I don't know whether or not it's toxic, but it smelled absolutely mind-blowingly good. And so, yeah, if you're ever interested in making some interesting compounds just to smell them, I would encourage you to do so if you can safely do so. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you guys like this, post in the comments, uh, and I'll try and make some more of these in the future. Thanks for listening. Leave a like and subscribe. And have a great day.